Hey guys, Higgy Pop here. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, woo, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit in a rush, but you're. What's with the shades? You saying? Oh, Higgy thinks he's cool. I don't think I'm cool. I'm injured. I got injured. Thanks, man. I got bad injury, and it, it was supposedly it was an accident. Thanks to Red so Sonia. Thanks a lot. I almost got destroyed. She, she. Was, I said, Sonia. We're watching the eclipse, right? I says, here. I says, make sure. I said, grab me. I said, Sonia, grab me the eclipse glasses, right? I think she did it on purpose. This is what she ends up grabbing me. My 3D glasses. Real funny. This was a barbarian humor. I swear. I mean, I I was, I got to show you, man. I, I, I'm a mess. I'm literally a mess. I mean, check this out. I mean, these, these, my eyes, the doctor says it should clear up. But I am hurting, man. I mean, I, I, it's, it's bad. I mean, is it looking any better? Way to go, Sonia. I mean, I'm, nah, it's clearing up. Anyways, a little eclipse humor. <laughs> Sonia, nah, but, um, listen, the eclipse was, uh, it was great. You can you can you can mimic the whole thing. You go out any day, any time. Just put your fist in front of your eyes like that, right in front of the sun. It's an eclipse, no problem. So, anyways, listen. I I, I completed a run. I completed two runs. Woo! -wee! Guys, thanks for joining me for real. Listen, I'm uh, leaving town. I, I'm going away. You know, undisclosed location. I'll be going for like t uh, eight to ten days, but you know. I got a friend coming over to stay here and watch my comics for me. Him and Hawk Dog. Yeah, I got friends. I do. I do have friends. Really. I, one friend I have. Uh, I never told you about my friend. My, he was the best man at my wedding. Sparky. Oh, great guy. Great guy. My boy Sparky. He, um, yeah, he was the best man at my wedding. We used to play football together. He's, a, he's kind of a big guy. I'd say he's about 400 pounder. Big dude. One day, he used to stay at my, uh, when I was living at my parents a long time ago. When I was a young Higgy, he used to stay with me. And, uh, one day, he, he went and sat on the toilet, right? And all of a sudden, he, I'm in the backyard, and he's upstairs sitting on the toilet. And all of a sudden, he opens up the window and goes, Hey, Higgs! I said, what? He opens, he hangs hands, hands out, this, out the window. He's got, he's got the toilet seat in his hand. It looks like a giant seat. He cracked the toilet seat in half. I was like, that's impressive work, my friend. Whoa. I said, I'm going to have to weld some handles on the side of that toilet. My God. Hey, listen. Our boy, uh, OJ, OJ died. Oh, holy, my OJ, man. I thank God for OJ. He's the one that, this is how I found out that uh, murder is legal in, in the state of California. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I would have never known. Look at this. This is called, He Said, She Said Comics Presents, the OJ Simpson story. This is issue number five. All right, it continues to issue number six. That's, that's as far as the series runs. But they have issues on, um, uh, who else was in there? There was um, the Nancy Kerrigan, the uh, ice skater. They did that. They did all sorts of stuff. They they covered a lot of silly stuff. But uh, it's a black and white. There's there's OJ. He's like, yeah, I'm on top of the world, ma. Right? And then uh, I mean, hey, you know, I mean, so what? They found a bloody glove in his yard. I mean, tell me a guy that you know that doesn't have a bloody glove. We all have bloody gloves. There is OJ. He's like, yeah, mm hmm So the first part of the book is from the man's side of the story. And the second part is from the woman's side of the story. She can't talk because she's dead. And so is OJ. So, uh, yeah, good old OJ. Look at him. He's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, look at this. Say cheese. OJ. Look out. OJ. Why not? So, uh, so I'm just going to go over what I, this is my weekly poll this week. I got Action Comics. Was This is a uh, 1064. Close the door. Real good. Awesome, actually. This is the, uh, the start of a new, uh, The House of Brainiac, part one. And it's really good. It's awesome. I loved it. They're doing a great job. I'm glad they're done with that Brainiac, uh, storyline because that was, uh, it hurt my brain. Not the Brainiac, Bizarro. Bizarro was no good. Bizarro. Mm -mm. When I say Bizarro, no good, I mean it was bad. Not 
in bizarro language. All right, as long as we got that straight. This is really good. Awesome. It's going fantastic. Superman's mad. So uh, Brainiac came. That all the Lobos attack. It's great, right? The, 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 he's a uh, Caesarian, and um, he was supposed to be the last Caesarian alive because he killed his home pla everyone on his home planet, a Lobo. But now Brainiac, he must have cloned a bunch of them because they all attacked Earth with some of uh, some of Brainiac's uh, androids. And um, they're getting nuts. They're getting nuts. They're just flying out of the sky. Like, Wee! Right? It's crazy. Yeah, so I'm taking off. I'm not going to be around. So uh, they're going to do some research on me. The, uh, pharmaceutical testing on me because I have uh, comic book madness. And uh, so I'll be away. They're going to lock me up. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But while I'm away, I, hopefully I can reach out and talk to you guys. Because I don't like being away from the hawk's nest. It drives me nuts. I miss you guys. Yeah, so they he, they do capture Luthor. They say, Brainiac says, you Luthor is the smartest man on the planet. Not Mr. Terrific and not Batman, that jerk. And so they capture Luthor, okay? And uh, Superman, he's, he's actually, he's, he's playing. He's like, he's pretending to be captured, but then he goes, he goes nuclear. Nuclear, right? And um, there's the, there's the main... That's that's not Lobo. That's someone else. He's he's running the Caesarian uh, clan here, and uh, look at all the brainiacs. They're like, we will kill. So they snatch up a, a bunch of super uh, powered people and they leave with Lex Luthor too. Great, great story. And the second one is Green Lantern. How? How's my pal? How's my pal? I drew a picture of Lobo on the back. Check it out. Little uh, artwork. Yeah, yeah. So this is fantastic. Hal, he finds out, he, he finally gets off the planet and he finds where all the other, there's a couple of lanterns that are hiding out and they're trying to figure out because the, uh, the leaders of the planetary uh, galactic leadership is, is, it went bad and they're killing all the power batteries and all the lanterns. And he finds, he finds everyone. Hiding out, the little resistance, you know. And there's Kyle Rayner. He's uh, he's got some PTSD. He's dealing with, and of course Hal does not follow instructions. They're like, we got to be cool. We we can't attack, and he, he attacks. So their cover's blown. And but there's a second story. There is a second story, and that has to do with see Hal. He's like attack, right? And um. Yeah, so my buddy Sparky, he, he's a nut. Oh, I just went to the AT&T store because where I'm going for my my testing, Comic Book Madness, uh, I had to get a different phone package. You know, and uh, so I, I, got, I met two guys from the AT&T store, Chris and John. Uh, they're comic book nuts. I made friends. Oh, you got a friend. So, so look, let me show you the second story. Come on, where is it? All right. There's even a, a, a Booster Gold sighting. Isn't that great? I love Booster. So now we come to we come to uh, Guy Gardner. All right, he has a contract to go capture Lobo. And if you see, if you remember back in the Omega Men, the first appearance of Lobo, he had two partners. That's these these guys remind. I think these are. Uh, from back in those characters from back in the Omega Men, I recognize this guy, and um, so they're in a, they're doing wrestling matches, and that's that's Lobo with the Luchadori mask, and Kyle Rayner has to bring this guy in. That's the other guy I was telling you about. I think that's the, one of the original guys that was with Lobo in the Omega Men, and um, so there's Lobo, the main man, right? And uh, this was a great story too. The second story was great. So then. Guy Gardner thinks he has Lobo captured, but then Lobo whistles, and usually his bad motorcycle comes, uh, space bike comes flying, but now he has dolphins. Space dolphins. <laughs> and great, great book. This was Green Lantern issue number 10. Oh, so, I, show, I told you, I got this at Harvey's. I'm so wild about Harvey. So, this was Unknown Soldier by... Uh, Garth Enos, Enos Weenus, the one-eyed Weenus, uh, one through four. Fantastic! What a read! Oh, my God! 
I'm so happy I read this. This was so good, man. Unknown Soldier 1 through 4 by DC Vertigo. And it was great, man. The art is great. The story's fantastic. It had me riveted. Oh, so good. And, um, yeah. How about Sonya burning out my irises? My lord. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, yeah, it was good to meet meet people at, at the phone store. I'm making friends. You know, I, I, I make friends. I got friends. I mean, usually I only like comic book people. You know, I do like normal people out there. You know, you wouldn't probably wouldn't think so, but I do. I, you know, but just at small doses. I like normal people for like about a, a minute and a half. Maybe like a minute, a minute and a half. And then I have to get out of there. I got to break out. I can't, I can't deal with it. And, uh, oh, so I go to Second Alarm Cars. <laughs> so I also want to find some reading material when I'm away, locked up. So it's just to pass the time. You know, I got to keep the brain. You know, comic books, they got to read them to make you smart. So I was there, and um, this was, the guy Mike was working at Second Alarm. He goes, Jim, you want this? This is in a condition of, whoa. Oh, minus. I said, don't you touch it. I said, I'm taking it. This is World's Finest issue number 215. January of 73. Cuckoo Kachi. And uh, Nick Cardi on the cover. These are the uh, Superman Jr. and Batman Jr. The Super Sons. Right? And uh, Dick Dillon does all the art inside. I just got this today. I didn't read it. But I, I picked up the O.J. Simpson book today. And this. And uh, yeah, man. And uh, I didn't have it. So I'm like, I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, I don't think I have this one. It's mine. So I grabbed it. And uh, I will read it and let you know how it is. As you can see, it's in a condition of, whoa, minus. But, so. And this is just something I grabbed that was in the hawk's nest. I read it the other day. It's, uh, it's great. June of 68. Irv Novick on the cover. Detective Comics issue number 376. We were all picking up sticks. And uh, Batman, hunted or haunted. And there's a great story. The second story has the elongated man in it. And um, let me see something. Gardner Fox writes and Chick Stone does the art. But I got to show you. This is a great picture of Batman. I, I, this is great. All right, here you go. Right off the hop. Right off the hop. Look at this. <laughs> Hey, how are you? <laughs> Batman's part in his hair funny. Look at that. Isn't that great? It's a good book. Then we got an elongated man in the second story. Oh, Ralph Digby. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, man. And yeah, I picked up some cool, interesting books, man. Very happy. Very happy. I picked up just because the cover, I, I always love this cover. Swamp Thing, issue number three. Boom. Bernie writes, and you can't get better than that, man. I do have Swamp Thing, issue number one. It's hanging on the wall. And that's in a condition of, whoa, also. And uh, this is March of 73. And this is cool. This is the story that has the Patchwork Man on it. All right. Patchwork Man, he kind of looks like Frankenstein. You know, I mean, he's an ugly, he's an ugly sucker. I mean, and... um. Let me show you. Let me just show you what, what I'm talking about. They did, they reprinted this Patchwork Man story in uh, Swamp Thing Saga, one of the annuals or something. Where is it? Patchwork Man. Where are you? This is him right here. Look at the mug on him, huh? Crawling out of the water. I mean, whoa. You give me a soft piece of wood and a dull knife, I could whittle you a better looking face than that. I mean, that is rough. Yow. Woof. Wow. Yeah, man. So, uh, whoa. So, uh, Swamp Thing, issue number three. Ah, uh, doesn't it feel good when you complete a, complete a run? Let me show you what I, wait till you see what I got, man. Oh, yeah. And, um, got it. And check this out. Oh, yeah, baby. Little Joe Kubert. Mr. Kubert, where are you? Mr. Kubert? Uh, paging Mr. Kubert. Okay, Mr. Kubert, do you remember drawing this? This is Fighting Forces, all right? This is issue number 180, sir. Do you remember? I love your headband. And this is great. This is um, 
This actually features one of my favorites. He's in there. See him with the hat, the skipper hat. Oh, yeah, where is Yeah, Captain Storm. Yes. I'm Captain Storm. No, yes. Captain Storm right there. Right there. Yeah. You got it, man. Captain Storm. Yeah. Robert Kanegar is always the writer for these war comics. Yes, sir. And uh, George Evans does the art inside. Yes. August of 78. Close the gate, man. And, uh, yes. Um, George Evans does the art inside, and it, it, it was really good. And uh, he's known for, um, I mean, he died in like 2001, George Evans. But uh, he did a lot of uh, classic illustrated. He did a lot of suspense stories in his time. And um, it was, uh, he actually worked for Wings Comics. But this is a good read. Look at her. Look at her. She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I had to pick up this one because this had Captain Storm on it too. This is Fighting Forces, issue number 165. You winged him, but bringing him down right on us, you moron. Look at that. And uh, Rick Estrada. Rick Estrada does all the art. The cover's by Luis Dominguez. But uh, Eric Estrada, um, he's from Havana. And... Uh, he specialized in war comics and uh, gritty street detective comics. And that, that was his specialty. And check it out. Captain Storm! Yeah! Awesome. And then I picked up, let's see here. I picked up I'm So Wild About Harvey and Harvey's Wild About Me. I picked up this beauty. Golden Key, UFOs in Outer Space. All right. Giants from the Unknown, Invisible Creatures, the drama that launched nationwide hysteria. Mm-hmm. Yes. I've been trying not to lick my fingers and turn pages because I know that is gross. It's gross. So I have my dog lick my hand while I'm reading. It helps. Hawk Dog. He's the best. Yep. Yeah, I've been trying to watch some more '80s movies too. You know, I I, I got uh, I pulled up Beastmaster on YouTube. Oh yeah, such a great! I forgot how awesome that movie was. You remember those monsters? They had no mouth. They're like all green, and they wrap around somewhere and go 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 go. And then they open up their their winged arms, and all the bones would fall out. I'm like, ha ha ha! Gotcha. Remember Red Dawn? Remember Red Dawn? Wolverines! Oh, classic, classic. So, good space story. And I got this. This has been a second alarm, second alarm, <laughs> for a long time. And I've been eyeballing it, but I finally grabbed it. And under the apex treasury of underground comics. All right? And this is crazy. This is a wacky, I mean, this has some wear and tear. Someone was reading this for a while, and I was, I've been reading this. This is crazy, guys. Where's my glasses? Where's my glasses? No, not my 3D glasses. Sonya's still trying to hurt me. I'm telling you. Um, so it has like R. R. Crumb does a story in here. I mean, it's freaky stuff. And um, let me show you. This is R. Crumb. And there's a, he does a story in here with this uh, guy dates a, a female Bigfoot. I mean, it's crazy. Yes. White man meets Bigfoot. I mean, it is. It gets nuts. There's a lot of, um, I mean, she kidnaps him. She got him in a sack. I mean, it's crazy. Art Spiegelman. Art Spiegelman. Acehole detective. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I mean, I, I tell you what, Gilbert Shelton, they are fun, but they're crazy. Crazy. The Sage Monkey. Sage Monkey. That funky monkey. Justin Green. 
all different styles. Willie Murphy, not Charlie Murphy, Willie Murphy. So it's a big thing of underground comics artists, and uh, it's a cool book. It's very cool. I'm glad I grabbed it. And I grabbed this. Black Knight, my one of my favorite Marvel characters. Dane Wigington. This is uh, July of 1980. This is issue number two. This was a, a, a mini series, four issues, and uh, this completes it. I've been looking for this sucker for ever, ever. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. And um, remember that movie, Men at, uh, what was it called? Men at Work with uh, Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez. They were garbage men. I used to love that movie. I used to be like, you know what? I think I want to be a garbage man when I grow up. I used to set my goals high. I'm telling you. The guy, the guy that they, uh, the guy with the uh, green uh, army jacket on, they were eating breakfast, and, and Emilio Estevez grabbed his fries, and he goes, "There are several things. <laughs> there are several sacred, sacred things in this world that you don't do, and that's touch another man's fries." <laughs> classic, classic stuff. So this is issue number two. And um, in the dread of night, this was done by uh, written by Roy Thomas and uh, um, Dan Thomas, his wife, and uh, Tony DiZuniga on the cover. And uh, Rich Buckler does all the art and the inks and stuff. So I could finally finish reading this. So let's. That's issue number two. Here's issue number one: The Black Knight. Rich Buckler and Tony DiZuniga on the cover. And I, I read a, a trade paperback of a recent Black Knight, and I didn't like it. They make him into a joke. All the Avengers are making fun of him and stuff. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it. No way, man. Issue number one. Here's the issue number two. There's a... Brian Braddock is in this one, Captain Britain, which was totally awesome. Here's issue number three. Baylor, Doctor Strange and the new Valkyrie join forces with the Ebon Avenger against the barbaric Baylor. There's Valkyrie, Doctor Strange. And then here's issue number four, the last issue, The Day of the Demons. Completed. Isn't that nice? And this is a recent one. This is number one of King and Black series from Marvel. Black Knight. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking to uh, um, Rigor Morris 86. Here's that picture of me with the Predator poster with my head going through it. It's funny, man. We, we, we both, we're, we're brothers, man. Me and Rick Morris. We both loved the, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the day. It was great. And he's did some great, he's doing some great artwork with the, when they do the bro handshake. They're like, what's the matter, Dylan? You think I you're pushing too many pencils? Him and the Hulk. I mean, Hulk and Conan doing that bro handshake. Fantastic. Fantastic. So anyways. Oh, let me just give you a heads up. I told you when I got this stuff at Harvey's, this uh, Alien Legion by Chuck Dixon. This is uh, issue one and two, all right? And uh, what else? And there's issue number three, Alien Legion. And then it goes into Alien Legion on the edge, issue one and two. I couldn't get through it, man. I couldn't take it! It just wasn't good, man. I mean, all these different characters, the different aliens, and then they're trying to introduce them, I'm trying to follow it. Then they got the aliens talking different gibberish languages. I'm like, I'm done. I had to tap out. And But I did read the pit, and I was reading it. I'm like, I read this before, and it was, it's still good. I, it holds up. I love it. So I just want to fill you in. Alien Legion. Ah, I got to be honest. So today, today I did it, man. I did I went for it, man. I went for it. Nova, issue number one. Whoa! Oh, yeah. 
issue number one. Rich Buckler and Joe Sinat on the cover. Oh, yeah. Yes. September of 76. That's right. Marv Wolfman was the writer. And John Bushima did the art inside. Fantastic. And um, so this is the introduction of uh, uh, Richard Ryder, you know. And uh, he gets the... Uh, the Nova, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Nova Prime dies. He's injured, fighting uh, Zor the Conqueror. So he sends the uh, he sends the um, the uh, Centurion power down to Earth, and it hits Richard Ryder. He's a seventeen year old. He's getting bullied all the time, right? This guy Mike is, is bullying him, and he's a geek, you know. So Richard Ryder. No, I mean, listen, would a name like Richard Ryder? I mean, you know, Dick Ryder. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I hate bullies, man. I always hated bullies. When I finally got to, into high school, I finally started to get a little aggressive, you know. You know, I think it was the Conan movies. I finally just, like, I had enough, you know, when people, and now I, I was, I was, I was always a big kid, so finally I'm like, hey, dude, what if I rip off your head and bowl with it? You know? And, uh, so he's getting bullied and stuff, you know. But now he's got the Centurion power. He's he's Nova. It's great and um, good stuff. And now I have the whole run. We're gonna go through Nova today. Oh yeah, man, the man called Nova, and um, it's good stuff. You know, I'll start. I always hated school, even when I was a kid. Like uh, my this teacher when I was like, uh, it, I remember I was in like second grade. Miss McQuiggan, this lady was a nightmare. She sits there. All the kids were lining up to go outside. And I'm sitting there. And she, she looks at in front of all the kids. This is what she does. She goes, Jim, you wear the same clothes every day. Doesn't your mother have any other outfits for you to wear? And all the other kids are looking at me. I'm like, did you have to say that in front of everyone? Disgrace. Yeah. So I go home. I said, Ma. I said, why don't you get me some more different clothes or something? You know, I, I think I was probably, you know, I was like, hey, these work. I'll wear these every day. This is nice. But no, you know, she had to stick me out. Miss McQuiggan. Then my mother went into school. She was like, hey, psh, get over here, over here. I got to talk to you. Hey, what am I doing? You know, she had to set her straight. But, um, Nova. Let's go. Let's hit it, man. Nova. The man called Nova. The man called Nova. So, uh, issue number two, Cuckoo Cuckoo. This is John Bashima on the cover and Frank Giacoa. Oh, you brought my Brazil. Look at that. Look at that, man. Yes, sir. There's the Condor, Powerhouse, and these guys harass them throughout the whole series. It's crazy. Powerhouse will drain you of all your superpowers, Nova. Then the Condor will swoop down to destroy you. Yeah, dog. Good stuff. Good stuff. Issue number three. John Bashima on the cover. And uh, Frank Giacoa. Look at that. Look at that stuff. Enter Diamond Head. Diamond Head. Whoa. I mean, these aren't the most craziest and powerful villains he goes against. But they, they're very formidable. They are. And, um... This is November of 76. This is Sal Bashima does the art inside on this one. Issue number four. Look at Thor. Oh, yeah, baby. Yes, Jack Kirby and Irv uh, Watanabe. Jack Kirby did Thor. Irv Watanabe did the rest, the cover. And, uh, yeah, man, Sal Bashima does the art inside. The human rocket against the power of Thor. Thunder God gone mad. All this plus a uncanny corruptor. Have at thee! And... Issue number five. Stay lat, stay lat, and you'll know, but listen to this. <laughs> All right. In uh, January of 77, um, Sal Bashima does the art inside. And um, the cover's by... Jack Kirby and Frank Giacoa. Classic. Classic. Issue number six. We're all picking up six. Dave Cockrum on the cover. 
There's the Condor powerhouse. Um. Oh, also it's got Frank Giacoa and John Ramita also do the cover with him. John Ramita, you like drinking Ramita coladas and getting cold in the rain. Nice. Issue number seven, All Dogs Go to Heaven. Why is Nova on a rampage? You'll flip your lid when you find out. Stop him before he destroys New York. You must read War in Space. Boom. Jack Kirby and Irv Watanabe. Watanabe. Nice. Issue number eight. John Bashima on the cover. The guy looks like he's all pink. Mega Man. Looks like a sponge. You know sponges? You know sponges are, uh, they grow in the ocean. Thank God. Imagine how deep the oceans would be if there weren't sponges in there. Hey, Lord. Think about it. Think about it. Issue number nine. I'll rip out your spine. There's no way you can escape the power of Mega Man. Awesome. A tragic battle amidst a blazing inferno. Fear in the funhouse. Doesn't look like he's having fun to me. No way. Issue number 10. I got a sticker on here. I'm going to get the sticker off, if you don't mind. All right, man. Yes. Yeah, so I got to find some good reading to take on this trip with me, or else I will be losing it. I'm taking my drawing pad, and, you know, that'll keep me busy. You know, keep me occupied. Issue number 10. You three, your three greatest foes shall slay you, Nova, and then I shall slay them. I remember this. This was a good read. I mean, Condor was always ordering Nova around and everything. That was crazy. Issue number 11. You've interfered with my plans for the last time, but after this battle, you will be Nova no more. Yes, the Sphinx, the Sphinx. Issue number 12. You killed my uncle, Web Slinger. Now I'm going to take to make you pay. Want to bet? Want to bet? Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. Kills Nova's uncle, then he laughs. Uh-huh. Issue number 13. I'll rip out your spleen. This one has it all. Introducing the Crime Buster. A death trap for Nova. The Sandman returns, and that's just for starters. True believers! What a great cover. Come on now! Come on now! Look at that. Look at it. Issue number 14. Look at Sandman. Don't try to stop me, because I'm grabbing Mike Burley. Even if I have to do it over your dead body. He's back. The sinister Sandman, deadlier than ever. Yes, yes. Did you ever get sand in your bathing suit? I hate it. Don't like it? Mm -mm, no way. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Issue number 15. Oh, I forgot to say. Hold on. I forgot to say something. This was issue number 10. Rigor Mortis is in the kitchen again. All right. Issue number 15. Look at them. They're all on there. The Hulk. Hulk no light Nova. Cap. Iron Man. Spidey. Man, look, where's the Hulk? I got to talk to him before I leave. Come here. Come here, man. Listen, you got to behave, bro. Bro, you got to behave. Because uh, last time you were here, you went blackout drunk, and I had to clean up after you. I mean, I mean, it was a, it was a nightmare, though. I, the smell is still in, this, in the garage. The we Hulk's nest, I mean. Our collective brains if we're going to finish this. I agree. Hulk, I agree. I mean... Look at this thing. I had it laminated, Hulk. I mean, you obviously eat a lot of protein. I mean, this thing, that could choke a toilet. I'm telling you, bro. None of this when I get back. This Hulk will break you. You will break a toilet with this. My God. 
Right. Your time is over. All right, hello. Uh, no, you couldn't outsmart a, a sneaker. All right, issue number 16. Even if you should survive the attack of my minions, you still must face the unparalleled power of the Yellow Claw. The Yellow Claw. The Yellow Claw. Not the Yellow Claw! Issue number 17. You are too late, Nova. Even if you can stop the Yellow Claw... This guy's still talking. My deadly tidal wave will still destroy New York. He's like, oh, I'm the Yellow Claw. Oh, this is a classic. I like this one. Issue number 19. I can't escape. His black light beam has trapped me. All right. The cover's by Carmine and Fatino. Yep. And um, blackout means business, and business is murder. Carmine and Fatino does all the art inside. And this is uh, Blackout's first appearance. Yeah, man. Sure. He uh he actually goes into the lab at the uh bio lab at the at the school and steals this weather uh weather controlling equipment. I mean it goes on and on with this blackout. Issue number twenty. Oh, uh, I showed you this the other day. This is but his, his brother Robbie with his stupid robot. The robot thinks he's a detective. He's like, yes, Robbie, we don't trust your brother. Mm, yeah, Jay. I'm a detective. You see, really, highly illogical. And um. Carmine Infantino on the cover. This one's called A Last. At Last. The Inner Circle. Issue number 21. I can't hide the truth any longer. Richard Ryder, Dick Ryder, is Nova. Please call me Richard. Nice. Yes, this is the comet. He's a, a hero from the 50s. Nice, nice. A little legacy. All right. The Coming of the Comet. Dave Cockrum on the cover. This is November of 78. And, you know, Diamond Head's in it. And Comet is, uh, he's awesome, man. He teams up with Nova. And issue number 23. Once Diamond Head destroys Nova, nothing shall stop me from ruling the Earth. Wrong. Control of this planet belongs to me. That guy has his brain in a jar. Whoa. Whoa. Good stuff, good stuff. Carmine and Fatino. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, Gene Colon does the inks on the inside. Gene Colon has a cousin who's also an artist, uh, Sammy Schrinkter. Look him up. Issue number 24. I showed you this the other day. This is this covers an homage to um, the uh, X-Men issue number 100. And, uh, yeah, man, it is on. It is on. The new champions, huh? Beckerman, what do you think of that? Where is he? Beckerman. See, I, I'm going to miss all my friends when I'm gone. And, uh, <coughs> but I'm, I'm taking some friends with me on the trip. Right, Beckerman? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I wish you could, uh, I could come with you. I said, you can. I'm going to put you in the overhead luggage. Yeah, yeah man. And uh, you love the new champions. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, boy. All right. And uh, I'm also, I asked uh, Rod. I mean, uh, I asked Shannon first. Is Shannon the bass cannon? He's like, boom, 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 boom. That's Shannon, right? Shannon, looking good, buddy, with the bass cannon. Yeah. Life is just a fantasy. Can't you see your fantasy life? Shannon. And then, uh, oh, there's also uh, Damien from Sleepy Reader 666. Yes, I'm going to read uh, Nova issue number 24, and I'm going to give a good full book report on that. Thank you, Damien. I enjoyed it. I would love to hear your opinion on it. Absolutely, Jim. All right? Everyone's coming. And, of course, uh, my, my boy Rigor Mortis, fellow Arnold Schwarzenegger fan. Eee! Uh, Rigor Mortis 86. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm going to pack some uh, Vertigo comics and, uh, you know, some, uh, you know. You know I'll, be, I'll be hanging out with you. Thank you, Rigor Mortis. Thank you, Rigor Mortis. All right. All right. And, uh, and um, of course, my boy Easy. Hey, Higgy Pop. Hey, what's up, Easy? Uh, you know, it's all good. I hear you, brother. All right, man. Uh, it's good to see you. You've got a friend. I got friends, baby. All right. Whoa. Um, the last issue of the run. Issue number 25. He's gone. The Human Rocket. 
the man called Nova. Make way, world! Nova smashing through! Booyah! May of 79, Keith Pollard and Gaspar Saladino are on the cover. Isn't that awesome? I completed a run! <laughs> Shazam! Yep. Carmine Infantino and Klaus Jansen do all the art inside. And we're dealing with this, in this issue, I mean, we're talking about scrolls. We're talking about uh, the Sphinx. Dr. Sun, again, the guy with the brain in the jar, and Diamond Head, they're all in there. And, and uh, it's continued in Fantastic Four, issue number uh, 205 or 6 or something like that. But that was his first run. Booyah! So happy. I'm so happy. And uh, what time we got? All right, let me just show you something real quick. Anyways, what'd you think of those underground comics, man? Come on, right? It's cool. This is from like 1974, I think. 1973. And uh, it's got a lot going on in there. I felt like I had to scrub my brain when I was done reading it. It gets a little raunchy. Underground, baby. Um, let's just look at some, uh, see, I was into Nova and I burnt out my pupils. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, looking at the eclipse. Let's look at some space related comics real quick. This is all Charlton, Charlton. We're doing the Charlton. Do -do -do -do. All right. This is space 1999 issue. Number one, the 25 center. All right. This is November of 75 and, uh, Joe, Joe Staten did the art. This is in a condition of, whoa, plus. I had the toy from this, uh, it was a big, giant, white spaceship, and I remember it, I remember, I remember, do you remember when we used to dance, and, um, what do we have here, space, 1999, issue number three, what's that, I can't see who did the cover on there, but, child in, child in, that guy's got some crazy sideburns, oh yeah, Space Burns. And Americans in Space Adventures. That's an old 10 center. This guy's like, um, anyone seen my spaceship? Wow, it's cold out here. This is Space Adventures, issue number nine. This is probably volume one or two, or I mean two or three or something. It's a 35 center. But we got my man Captain Comet. All right. Steve Dicko does the cover and the, all the art inside. I love it. And um, intro to Captain Comet is the first story. And the second man in space is the second story. The third story is The Crisis. This is actually volume two. Issue number nine. And uh, I love these Captain Comets. Isn't that great? Bodybuilding. And uh, it's got a mean spine roll. I suffer from a spine roll. Um, look at Captain Tom. Look at Steve Dino, huh? Come on now. Look at it! Great stuff. Great stuff. Love it. I would love to get more. And this is issue number 10. Captain Comet. Space Adventures. That's a bird in space. Bird in space! All right, then I have Charlie Comics, Space War, Children of Doom, number 32. It's a 35 center. Look at that cover, though, man. Isn't it great? That rocket looks like something else. It does. It does. Yeah, so... Uh, Doomsday Plus One, issue number nine. The decision has been made. Your world must be destroyed. Uh, can I get a second opinion on that? Um, Space Adventures, number seven. This is a 12 center. This must be a volume one. The Firemen of Pyro. All right. May of 69. And... Pat boy, it. There's all the art. 
Pat Boy yet. And we have Space War, issue number 29. The Enchanted Planet. I have a, a slight blemish right here. Right here. Right there. But I love it. Oh, yeah, baby. Mm -hmm. Very colorful. Very colorful. Awesome. And, oh, there we go. A little DC action. Time Warp, issue number one. Doomsday Tales and other things. Uh, this is awesome because it's it's got like eight stories in it. It's got Mike Kaluta on the cover. Kaluta. And um, it's uh, it goes uh, from issue number one to five. I don't have them all. This is came out in like 79. And uh, there's a Steve Ditko. That, uh, it's called The Mating Game. That's uh, the second story. Steve Ditko does it. Then Dick Giordano does the third story. And Mike Barr and Tom Sutton does the fourth story. Steve Ditko does all the art and inks on the fifth story. And Jerry Grandinetti, ew, does the uh, sixth story. And Don Newton, no relation to the fig. And uh, then the, the, the last story, the eighth story, The Man Who Could See Yesterday was done by Jim Apero. If you guys find this, grab it because it's chock full of artists and creators and they are very creative. Look at that cover by Mike Kaluta. And I got two copies. All right. And this is issue number three of Time Warp. Doomsday Tales and Other Things. This has another set of eight stories. I remember this was um, Mike McGuire. I remember this wasn't as good as the other one, but the cover's fantastic. That's a big bug. Space bug. All right. And here's Time Warp, science fiction, issue number five. Doomsday Tales and Other Things. Mike Kaluta. Yeah, I mean, um, it's loaded. Loaded. I'll show you. Let me show you. And, um... Paul Cooperberg. And this is Don Newton. I mean... Great art, man. Great art. That's the first story. And Dick Ayers. Let's see. And what do we got here? Edgar Picasso. I mean... This is cool art right here, too. Earth or Exile. Good stuff. Good stuff. The Vengeance of C-92. Very detailed. Very detailed. Loving it. Um, good stuff, man. Gotta love it. The Encounter. Trevor Von Eden. So that's what you get. What a good old time warp comic. And, uh, and, oh yeah, DC, Giant, Super Giant, Strange Flying Saucer Adventures. All right, this is number 27. That's a UFO. And that's it, guys. I'm not going to see you for a while, but I will check in. I will be checking. All right, and, uh, Let's take it out, man. You guys are the best. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss the hawk's nest. I'm going to miss... Hawkman! Keep an eye on things. Keep an eye on the Hulk, this guy. Whoa. All right. Let's take it out. Let's take it out, shall we? All right, man. It felt good to complete some runs. I'm telling you. Black Knight. I've been looking for that comic forever. Ever.
Nova, great stuff. Finally completed my Black Knight. It was bound to happen, just like a hockey fight. The eclipse hurts, Sonya got me good. She's dangerous, like barbarians in the hood. The sun's rays hit me like a lawn dart. I hope, hope I can read my comics, cause they make me smart. Read your comics, they make you smart.